Let us stand and pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. In the waters of baptism, Claire died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him the gift of eternal glory. I welcome you all here this morning to our funeral mass for Claire Veronica Beachino. I welcome especially Bill and Claire and Bill's children, children in inverted commas, they're very big children now, um, Michael, Michelle, Lisa, Lance and their spouse and partners, their extended family grandchildren and also great-grandchildren all scattered around this morning but with us in spirit. I also welcome those who are joining us on the streaming wherever you may be. It's wonderful to be able to um, have you as part of this Mass for Claire. It is a Mass of thanksgiving for her life. Thanksgiving first of all to God for the gifts that she had, the gift of love, most of all, the way in which, through her, God's love touched people in this life. Just like we have gifts, we have weaknesses, so at this, we take this opportunity to pray also that any forgiveness she needs will be granted to her by the Lord, and that she may speedily reach the home prepared for her by Jesus in heaven. Let us begin by singing All Things Bright and Beautiful. God that made 
things wise and wonderful, t'was God that made them all. The purple-headed mountains, the rivers running by, the sunset and the morning that brightens up the sky. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The cold wind in the pleasure, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, he made them every one. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, t'was God that As we come before the Lord for this Mass, we ask forgiveness for ourselves through our own human weaknesses. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Listen kindly to our prayers, O Lord. As our faith in your Son, raised from the dead, is deepened, may our hope of resurrection for your departed servant, Claire, also find new strength through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Please be seated now for the first reading in the psalm. First letter of St. Paul to the theologians. Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, brothers, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them, like the other people who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teachings, that any of us who are left alive until the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out to command and the Lord himself will come down from heaven those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise and then those of us who are still alive will be taken up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. So we shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. 
He guides me along the right path. He is, he is true, true to, to his, his name. name. If I, I should, should walk, walk in, in the valley of darkness, no, no evil would I fear. You are, you are there, there with your crook, crook and your staff. With, with these you give me comfort. comfort. You, you have prepared, prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Now we stand for the Holy Gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Whoever believes in me will never die. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking together about all that had happened. Now as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side. But something prevented them from recognizing him. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said, and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now while he was with them at table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them, and their eyes were opened and they recognized him but he'd vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the 11 assembled together with their companions who said to them, yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and they had they had recognized him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated for a few moments. Towards the end of Mass today, um, the family will pay their tribute through the eulogy to Claire, but I'd just like to say a brief word of my own at this stage. One of the things we heard in the first reading from St. Paul was he says to his Christian community, um, he wanted to make sure that they did not grieve about their loved ones who had died, like other people who have no hope. Now, that sounds at first reading different to what it means. I'll explain what I mean by that. Paul is not saying to his community, do not grieve. He says, don't grieve in the way that people who have no hope grieve. In other words, he wasn't telling them not to grieve. He was just saying that a person with Christian faith grieves in a different way with hope. And that is what we are doing today in our Christian faith for Claire. As Christians, although we grieve for the loss of a loved one, we also have a joy, a deep joy in our hearts. And that joy is 
expressed in different ways among yourselves, um, dressed brightly, many of you. That's about the joy that Paul is talking about. That's what he means when he says, don't grieve like people who have no hope. We as Christians have something to celebrate. First of all, we celebrate the good that the person who has died has done in this world, Claire in this case. We celebrate her family that she brought up with Bill. Uh, we celebrate their love together. And in fact, each one of the many people here today and those joining us on the streaming, you each have your own story of your relationship with Claire. And you each have your own little things that um, is personal to you that I'm sure you would want to join in giving thanks to God for this morning about her. So this Mass, it's a celebration, it's a thanksgiving, um, but with God at the centre. It was a great privilege for me, um, just a very short while before she died, to be able to visit her at the family's invitation and to say those prayers with her, to give her the holy anointing. And I must say she was, one of the things that struck me when I came away is that she was so, she knew she was dying, but she was so serene um, about it. She was not distressed and um, she was just very peaceful and very interested in the prayers that I was saying with her and sharing with her. And then her family joined us as well on that evening. So it's a lovely uh, memory of faith to have. And again, another example of how as Christians we grieve with hope. She certainly had great faith-filled hope in her heart that evening and was very aware of everybody around. And with Bill, she too in her own way was thanking God for all she received in her life from the Lord and from her loved ones. Um, as I'm sure you will hear later, family was the center of her life. That's why not just her immediate family, the extended family, that's why she would love very much this mass today where so many people are gathered in church to pray their tribute and to give their expression of love. Um, I've been gradually coming to know this family since I came to the parish here eight years ago. I've met them bit by bit um, here in this church and it's nice to have them all together. <laughs> it just gets bigger and bigger each time. And apart from um, them coming to the church here, you will understand what I mean when I say, look around and I have a lot of lawns, you know. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Um, so we don't grieve, we grieve, yes but we grieve with hope and with faith. And indeed, grief in itself, painful as it is for you at this moment, especially her immediate family, grief, the pain of grief is an expression of love. If you didn't love someone so much, you wouldn't pain so much now at her loss. You know, sometimes we say, well, when we're in grief, we can't find the words to pray. Well, you don't need to because the prayer is your grief, because it's an expression of love, of loss, how much she meant to you. And it's also, today in this Mass, directed towards God to give thanks for her and also to ask him to welcome her into the home that he has prepared for her in heaven. Eternal rest grant unto her, Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. Let us pray for Claire, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life. 
In her life, she lived in Christ. May she now share in the fullness of his resurrection, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us pray for those that care for the sick and dying, especially St Christopher's Hospice and the carers who looked after Claire at home during her illness, that they may have the reward of their goodness in this life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for Claire's friends who experienced her unique personality, that, will always, that they will always remember the precious gift their friendship was to her. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for Claire's family. We especially pray for Claire's husband, Bill, and her four children, Michael, Michelle, Lisa, and Lance. May they all be consoled in their grief by the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for Claire's cherished grandchildren, Victoria, Christopher, Pollyanna, Bradley, Christian, Olivia, and Charlie. We also pray for Claire's cherished great-grandchildren, Charlotte, Ella, and George. May they all be comforted in their grief, and may they all follow the example of faith and charity set by their grandmother and great-grandmother, Claire. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give thanks for the love which Claire's dear family and friends showed to her during her life. May Claire know the perfection and fulfilment of that love in heaven. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Mary rejoiced at the resurrection of Jesus, her son. May she welcome Claire through the gates of heaven as her spiritual mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thou womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sister, Claire. Cleanse her and all the faithful departed of their sins, and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, if we bring the bread and wine to the altar for the blessing of the gifts. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness receive the wine we offer you, through the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, wash away my iniquity, or cleanse me from my sin. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father.
Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that our departed servant, Claire, may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united, through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ who is Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying may be consoled by the promise of mortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. So with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we brought you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and to give me thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Aidan and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, Paul and Philip, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we've summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Claire, whom you've called from this world to yourself. 
Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. When you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you our God as you are, we should be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We stand now and say the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, for we are his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, enter under my roof. But only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Body of Christ, bring me to life everlasting. Amen. Holy Communion will now be distributed. If you're not a Catholic, if for any reason you're not going to Communion, you're welcome to come forward for a blessing. You can indicate you would like a blessing simply by crossing your arms like that. Christ. William, we're going to we're going to start that hymn again. We're going to sing it together. Please stand. I 
I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I have made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the Go, Lord, if you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them. My hand will save. Finest, finest bread I will provide till their hearts be satisfied. I will give my life to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. I will hold your people in my heart. I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts of love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord, if you leave me. I will hold your people in my heart. Please remain standing. Let us pray, grant we pray, our Lord, that your servant, Claire, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace, through Christ our Lord. Please be seated now as the family pay their own tribute with the eulogy. Take your time.
<clears throat> Thank you. Hello, everyone. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Michael, <clears throat> the elder son of Claire Beechner. I can understand why the church is so full today. Today we honor the life of my mum. You, me, and the person you're sitting next to also knew my mum. We all have that in common. Thanks for coming. I want to share some brief background about mum before dad delivers his memories. Mum's maternal grandparents were German immigrants that came here in the early 20th century. They were master bakers and established a successful business in London. Claire's mother, Margaret, was the youngest of six. Margaret married Leslie, and in September 1939, Mum was born and war broke out in Europe. Three years later, her sister Brenda arrived. Sadly, the business was destroyed through the war and the marriage was not successful. Soon, Margaret was raising her two girls, Claire and Brenda, alone. She had a tough role in difficult times. I'm told that my mum always had clean clothes, was well fed and always did her homework. These were not universal values in her community. Her aunts and uncles supported my grandmother's efforts, helping her through education and holiday breaks. Margaret never remarried. She did, however, instill strong values and principles in her daughters, in particular concerning selflessness, her work ethic, and the value of education. She sacrificed a great deal to raise them, and mum would go on to follow her example at the heart of that family. My mum put everyone before herself. That attitude meant that us children never felt anything other than loved and safe, as well as having well-ironed clothes at all times. I've enjoyed talking about mum with her childhood friend, Mari. She's with us today and was present bedside when mum passed away. Apparently, mum grew to be a really fun-loving and happy teenager. She enjoyed netball and loved playing tennis. Latterly, she could be found dancing at the Lyceum in the Strand and frequenting the coffee bars of Soho before sometimes walking all the way home to Bermondsey. These qualities would soon draw her to the attention of my father, to whom I shall now hand over. Can you hear me okay? Good on you. Before I talk about Claire, may I, may I say that by seeing you here today sends a glow of warmth contentment as we join together to celebrate a life well spent. <laughs> Sorry about this, it's very difficult. <coughs> the love of my life, my girlfriend Claire left this world on Saturday the 16th of March in her beloved home, encircled by the love of her nearest and dearest. Claire and I were fortunate enough to share many happy years together, but all the same I feel I would go through anything to have more time with her. Claire was a hard-working, driven young lady, and when I met her, she had a Saturday job in a shoe shop and would outsell the regular staff to enable her to get commission to enjoy and do what she wanted. As you know, Claire loved the challenge. 
she called me on the hop and said, Bill, will you marry me? As quick as a flash, I said yes. <laughs> because I had won the lottery of life. She planned our wedding in St. George's Cathedral and had us all dressed up in top hat and towels. And when you saw that dress, what a beautiful bride Claire was. Claire had four wonderful children, seven grandchildren, and, a great grand and four, three great-grandchildren, all dearly loved and cherished. She never liked to fuss being made about her. Claire always had more time for everybody else around her. A truly inspirational, loving, lovely, warm-hearted person. Never a bad word to say about anyone. But if you said something she did not appreciate, then you were in trouble. Claire would raise her eyebrow, tap her index finger, with I'm not amused, and I'm sure some of you here would have experienced the famous Claire stare. That carried on right to the end. She may not have tapped her finger at that stage, but certainly still raised her eyebrows. Claire had many interests, most importantly, family first, then sport, and finally travel. Claire loved parties, enjoyed planning, and hosting many fantastic memorial, memorable events. And I'm sure a lot of us can remember those events with happy and joy, and welcome to you all. As a young lady, Claire enjoyed playing tennis, and she even taught me how to play. And as I got better, she claimed a handicap. She had become pregnant with our first child. In later years, Claire enjoyed going to Wimbledon with many members of her family and friends. She even had her children and grandchildren helping her to apply for tickets. And of course, her football team was Tottenham Hotspur and we would all go up the spurs. <laughs> Nan, the kids' grandchildren would say, they never win anything. And she would enlighten them by, enlighten them by saying, that they were the first team to do the double. Not mentioning that this happened to be 40 years ago. Claire had a passion to travel the world, which she did amongst other, Claire's other, sorry. Claire had a passion to travel the world, which she did. Amongst Claire's greatest planning was a trip of a lifetime to Canada and America. She organized the Winnebago the size of a bus and a towing, a towing caravan on the back for the boys to sleep in as we traveled from Canada to Florida whilst visiting many places of interest along the way. And I'd love to sell you those stories because you know I could stand here all day and go on about them. Fabulous time, Claire. Thank you very much. Also, Claire organized another trip of a lifetime on a Mediterranean cruise for our golden wedding anniversary. Weren't we so lucky? She also wanted her family to view some of the wonders of the world, which she also, sorry, and she also wanted her children to experience and learn from. Her great, greatest enjoyment was the little house we had in Spain, and this is where so many happy holidays with our family and friends was with their children. Spain has a great significance in that with our ch grandchildren and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, as they carry on Claire's legacy with a slogan, Viva España. Claire is not with us now, but I can see in the faces of my children and my grandchildren, and that brings me a lot of comfort. They were all so important to her. Claire's face would lighten up when she would see them to talk to them on the phone. Even in the last few days, they brought such joy to Claire when she was able to give the great-grandchildren their Easter presents and see the delight in their faces watching them play by her bed and that was truly beautiful. Right. Claire was beautiful both inside and out. I was truly blessed to have a wife who loved me. I love so much. It hurts. Cheers, thank you. Not gin and tonic. Yeah. Oh God, thank you. I don't know how I'm going to make it without her, but I know she's up there, looking down. 
telling me, just get on with it, Billy boy. Look after the family <laughs> and thank them all. And in replying, I'm trying, darling, but it's hard to do with that. You to keep me on track, sorry. Right. I would like to end this eulogy with what they say is the most honest words come from little children. Oh, that's better. We're nearly through the hard bit. When Victoria told Charlotte, who is four, that Nanny Claire had gone to heaven, Charlotte said, that's lovely. She'll be with the Queen. Truly royalty together. When Erin told Ella, who is three, she said, Nanny Claire is the brightest star in heaven and we can always talk to her and she will be shining bright each bedtime. And little George, who's two, cried out, love you, Nanny, always. That said it all, Claire. You are loved, but never forgotten. Thank you, everybody. God bless you. And I would like to hand over now to my, to my granddaughter, who is the twinkle of her grandmother, and she will talk to you the way Claire will talk to you, and love and enjoy what she says. She's wonderful. <laughs> so go for it, kid. God bless you all. When we think of Nanny, three words came to mind to us all. Caring, loving, and fun. We had a Nanny who was caring. She showed this in endless ways, be it the delicious food she cooked for us, always three courses at her house, with melon to start with a decadent drizzle of coulis, followed by her rissoles, and her showstopper would be custard or blancmange with a thick set skin on top of some fruit. Or, be it sneaking some sugar onto our strawberries and pretending she hadn't but she made them so sweet. Albeit when she flew out to America with a couple of fruitcakes and a carry-on from my brother and I. We never had to be asked twice to jump into her bed on the morning of a sleepover, knowing we'd be greeted with tea and an endless supply of rich tea biscuits. This sweet treat continued from her, her great-grandchildren, Charlotte, Ella and George, who will always be with biscoffs in her tea, more often three each, but that was Nanny. We all remember Fridays being the shopping day with our unique memories of the event, be that Pollyanna and Bradley being allowed to eat the top of the French stick as they went up and down the aisles, which meant no more than half made it home, or buying us magazines, or in the school holidays, an educational book to keep us busy. Eventually, these bribes escalated to the promise of a trip to the zoo, if we would write a diary on our school holidays to Spain. And I can confirm we did go to the zoo that year. However, I can't remember how many of my cousins actually completed this task. But that was Nanny. Her house was always the place you'd want to be, especially if you were unwell. Whilst I don't believe she ever had formal medical training, she was always happy to prescribe her own brand of medication, which always we took diligently. One notable cure was for Bradley, who after being knocked down by a car and once back on the ward at 7A, was a cuddle from Nanny and the addition of a couple of spoonsfuls of sugar in a glass of Coke for his shock. <laughs> However, not to be outdone, Pollyanna took this a step further when she decided to convalesce from tonsil surgery and Nanny prescribed trips to Wingyip, ice cream on the hour and fresh vitamin D from the Spanish sun. Nanny cared for her so well that the armchair remains moulded to Pollyanna and it's now known as Flo's chair. We had a nanny who was full of fun. Nanny would always be up for some fun. Not many 60-year-olds enjoy a visit to Disney World 
and you can get me guaranteed that she was going to go on any of the rides at the beck and call of Christopher and I, although she did draw the line at the water rides, knowing her hairdresser Caroline was not easily able to make the weekly visit whilst in Florida. Nanny was a sentimental lady. She'd keep the ribbons off the birthday cakes and put them in our hair, less so for the boys. She would try to preserve wrapping paper by not ripping a shred. But one thing that has stopped in our minds is that any cork from a bottle of bubbles would require Granda to dig into his pocket and find us some silver to insert into the bottom and give us to keep. It was a way of her giving us a chance to remember the special memory we'd just made together. She meticulously planned for Christmas each year and would bring the whole family together to celebrate. She started the tradition of our annual trips to the pantomime her bag and pockets would be bulging with the festive treats. The auditorium would be silent, but the seven of us would be rustling away with delight. She was so proud when her great-grandchildren shared her joy in this tradition too. Eventually, she entrusted Pollyanna and I with decorating the Christmas table, a duty we performed each year in exchange for a bottle of bubbles, enjoyed together with our supervisor whilst we completed the task. Christmas is always a special time of year, but Nanny would always push the boat out to make sure it was extra special for us youngsters. Not many seven-year-olds could toast the Queen's speech with their own bottle of Buck's Fizz or Cur Royale one year, but that was Nanny. She would squeeze the potential out of every moment. She never wanted to be bored and looked for something interesting to do all the time. I remember this when she helped me plan a hot day, ring her own travel agent to get a better price than mine, then giving me some tips to see if I can negotiate even further with them. Ask them about an extra night here, add an excursion, ask them again is that their best price. She imparted her wisdom and experience and showed me to seize the opportunity. By the end of it, the trip was longer, but we had a better cabin and an experience that was unforgettable. She obviously got them to throw in a free bottle of wine too. Nanny loved hearing all of our adventures as we travelled the world. She would love to FaceTime with Olivia, a cocktail in hand, and Nanny at home with a G&T and have a virtual cheers together. Oh, sorry, I've got a runny nose. Uh, we had a nanny who was loving. While she was nanny to the seven of us, her love was shared far and wide. All our partners came to know her as Nanny Claire too, and there were even more who adopted her as a nanny through being part of our wider family. So much so that one of Christopher's friends, Sean, would be known to pop in even without Christopher and visit my nan to have a chocolate biscuit or two and a gossip together. One thing that has never been in doubt was how proud she was of all of us. She would remember all our achievements and triumphs, no matter how small, and she would proudly share these with all her friends and the family. She would celebrate all our milestones as we sat exams, graduated, moved out, got new jobs, marriages, births. She didn't miss any of them. A phone call, a card, popping over to celebrate with a drink with us. Nanny was with us all at these moments, full of praise and delight. And for those of us who sometimes took a detour and had a few extra milestones to get to where we are now, she was always encouraging and supportive. So, some say you won't know what you've got until it's gone. But we have always known we were blessed to have Nanny. Thank you. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. I know that my Redeemer lives, and on that final day of days, his voice shall bid me rise again, unending joy, unceasing praise. This hope I cherish in my heart, to stand on earth my flesh restored, and not a stranger but a friend, behold my Saviour and my Lord. We'll now sprinkle the coffin with holy water as a reminder of Claire's baptism. Water is a symbol of life. 
holy water is the symbol of our baptism, the promise of eternal life. incense to incense Claire's body because our bodies are in this life the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Claire, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our communion with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurance of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs welcome you and take you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May choirs and angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is poor no longer, there may you find eternal rest. At the end of the recessional hymn, we will process with the immediate family behind the coffin to the hearse. At the hearse, I will say some final prayers. As we're not going to the crematorium, I will say the prayers of committal with the immediate family outside. So let us stand. In peace, let us take Claire to her place of rest.
Jesus says, Come you who my Father has blessed, inherit the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. Almighty God, living God, remember the love with which you graced your servant Claire in this life. Receive her, we pray, into the mansions of the saints. Look at favor on those who mourn and comfort them in their loss. Because God has chosen to call our sister from this life to himself, we commit our body to be, be cremated. For we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory. For he has risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our sister to the Lord, that he may embrace her in his peace and raise her up on the last day. I could have her, Lisa and your brothers and sisters, to sprinkle the coffin of water, please. Where's, where's Michael? And Lance and Lisa. Where's Lance? Mark. Oh, you're Lance. Lance. Sorry. Would you like to drink a bit of Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful, you are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need, and strengthen their hope in, their last, in your lasting goodness. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of him and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. And thank you, everyone. Okay, you're free to go out now. <laughs> Thank you.